Welcome to Game Does Play Games, the show where we play games, talk game design, and play... The, the, the Banner Saga 2. Banner Saga 2. God, you're so... Preview? You killed my it's, vibe. It's a preview? It's preview of Banner Saga 2. Hope, hope you guys like it. Oh my god, you're the worst. We're leaving now. We're I mean, leaving. If you're, if, you're We're starting, leaving. if you're starting this series at episode 5... Go back to one, man. You're missing all the greats. It's you all are great. Missing all the great and, stuff. and we're not even saying and that we're great. We're saying this game the is first great. Banner Saga. Go then back. Go back. Watch to the... or don't watch. Don't watch this. Play whatever. <laughs> watch the Bastard Saga. That was probably the funniest. Shouted orders. Turn several ships towards the bank. You have no choice but to call all the other vessels to hit halt as well. By the time you land, a crowd has gathered by the water. Keep breathing. I know there's nothing on screen, just keep reading. <laughs> a man in fine clothes, a missing hand, stands in the center of the others. He smirks as you approach. That guy looks like he is up to no good. What? No good? Oh, no wow. Good. He does look like a troublemaker. Jeez. Or right. like a really badass Icelandic person. He's missing a hand. Isn't like that's one of the... That's uh... a hand. It's, it's not there. Oh, Maybe that's our right, Rick Grimes. <laughs> I was just going to make that joke. <laughs> uh, uh, his name is Ruga. It is blow spoilers for that series. Whatever. It's like on the cover of one of the comics. <laughs> that's, that's whatever. True. And here he is, the famed self-proclaimed ruler of us all. Wow. All Whoa. Right. Holy cow. We've been like... Are you the reason for this delay? I don't answer questions from backwater scum, no matter how high they've Whoa. risen in the pond. Oh. Is this uh, Luden's dad? Please tell me this is Luden's dad. Oh my dad. god, that would be great. Uh, this I'll is going to be the reason why humanity dies, is because right, of people because like of this him. Guy. Then I'll stop asking, go back on the boats, handle this quickly with force. I don't think punching this guy is a good idea. No, he has sort of this like presumed air of authority that he thinks is is righteous. So yeah. I don't think that will work well. Okay. Plus he's lost a hand, so he's willing to take that extra <laughs> That's step. True. All right, just go, just go back on a boat. You don't know who you're talking to, do you? Nope. <laughs> uh, Rook, you might not remember when we first arrived in Beauregard, but I went in, uh, with Bulwark to speak with the governor. What's your point? Well, this is Ruka, the governor. <laughs> <laughs> Luden, the entitled Prince of Avarang, has joined you in Iron Lo Iron Toft. Step forward with a gathering crowd. The former governor of what was Beauregard, actually. Oh, Luden. Oh, oh Luden. Oh, this is going to be a sissy fight. <laughs> <laughs> Careful, Prince. Rivers are dangerous, especially this far from your papa's side. Ooh, oh, holy cow. Sissy fight all the, the way, The threat man. causes a few gasps from the clansmen. <laughs> Luden's bodyguard, the usually quiet Varl Bercy, Growls, uh, uh, growls, but his weight is waved off by the young prince. The mender and I were just discussing Rook's banner. It'll make a nice addition to Beauregard. Wow. Uh. Ooh. I don't know if we want to, like... I mean, do we want to, like, boost up loot in here? Or do we want to just be like, no, nah, dude. I mean, we're not really going to say, fine, I don't really care, right? Because we do care. We, yeah, we because carried basically that banner he's through saying a nice thing. addition to theirs. I'm yeah. not adding, I'm not letting my banner like, be part we, of his. We All earned right. this legacy. You know what, Luden? I think we go with Luden. Okay. You, uh, you know what? I think this is your chance it. to shine, and man. And if Luden gets drowned in a river, you know. <laughs> <laughs> if he loses his hand, then whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Luden glances at you, a brief look of appreciation upon his face. If anything, Rook's banner would join Aberang's, or are you claiming controller of this entire kingdom, too? I'm just trying to guide my vulnerable prince home with some dignity and proper leadership. But it was Rook who led the fight against Bellor when you hid in the Great Hall, Governor. <gasps> oh, dang! Is this where we're going to start to like Ludin? Maybe. <laughs> Overseeing a besieged town isn't hiding, Mender, just as fighting in a battle isn't necessarily leading. What a douche. But a rook kept us alive across the frozen waste, didn't he? Cries a man. Saved us in Iron Top, too. A woman adds. Others join in, listing your deeds and cheering your name. This is the first time anything like this has happened. They like, like us. Right. They like us. Yeah. <laughs> 
Then it's settled. No more delays. Rook is our official guide to Ar Arborang, but will consult with me on major decisions. All right, Luden. <laughs> just everyone just get back on the boats. Just, just, just win? Do we just hit the win button? Yeah, I just, think we'll just, we just, just hit the win button. Win. Bam. Yes, return to the ships. <laughs> <laughs> A helmeted guard next to Ruga makes a gesture for only the governor to see. Ruga laughs as the crowd disperses. <laughs> Prince, you uh, your guide has lost uh, has a lot up to learn before Abarang. Do, 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 do. You got a lot to learn about us, boy. Done. That was a very Morale satisfying declined. interaction. That was incredibly satisfying. I mean, it was it was like. It's satisfying for multiple reasons, right? Because we defeated... Socially, we defeated this guy that's all like, Pompous, no, I'm better than you. But oh, what's wife. more is that we beat him with our pompous asshole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ahead, Driftwood has collected, creating an impressive barrier for longships. Alternately, going ashore... Uh, yeah, uh, alternatively, going ashore uh, has its own risk from whatever might be lurking in the trees. Row hard, we'll break through. Bank the ship and set uh, set all axemen to chopping or prepare for portage. We carry the ships around. Oh, my. Mm. Okay, so this is okay. our first, like... Like, real decision to make here. Th th like, first wilderness survival-y decision. True, yeah. um, um, Well, I see this one being terrible for us. Yeah, I see that one not ending well. I see I... this being, like, have to probably survive some dredge. Yeah... Prepare for portage, though. We'll carry the ships around. I feel like that alone... No, because if there are things in the trees, right? Chopping down the trees is probably going to bring them out or scare them away, depending. But it does keep us on the outside skirts of the trees, which option three does not. Option three lowers our defenses because As we're we have carrying, carrying the... Sh the so, all right, cool. Let's do this one, yeah? Yeah, I, I think right. that's our best option. Once on land, you, Ivor, and anyone else with an axe start backing or hacking away at the wood blockage. Thudding sounds fill the air. Moments later, Ruga says, Damn, we've got company. As Dredge approach from the woods, you realize others will, ha will have to uh, hold them off until you have cleared the driftwood. Well, better here than inside the woods, in yeah. my opinion. You're about to enter a battle. If you find the battles too challenging or difficult, you can uh, you yourself needing a tougher challenge. You can modify the difficulty settings. Okay. Cool. Don't worry, you can change them anytime. Because, you know, just for fun. Um, to access the difficulty this... setting, go to options. Was that the same in the last game? I feel like uh, it... I think it was, actually. I never actually modified it, but... You know, I honestly it find really... it interesting that when games allow you to do that, like, it's a good thing, but it does kind of feel like you're cheating. It doesn't... I mean, making it easier or difficult, truly, the game's all about its narrative, and right, what would fair. happen is even if you made it more difficult, it would actually... Mm. You would only recover from resting. You wouldn't recover from days of travel. Uh... In addition, you would lose people more often. So basically what it came down to was, like, it wasn't necessarily getting harder it felt harder because a lot more sacrifices were happening i, I think and that's the, basically where it's at so i, I, I think though, the, the point here. that you made though about this game being more about the narrative is Kapow. is really like hitting the hammer on the the on the head because like hmm. i think really what it comes down to at the end of the day with this game is that if the gameplay is blocking the narrative right if you cannot get past it a certain obstacle because it's just too hard then I think they want you to be able to decrease the challenge so that you can continue the narrative because that takes precedence over everything else yeah I, I think that's a very like fundamental design design decision that they must have like decided early on in, in the creation of this game oh, like sorry. even back in Banner Saga 1 yeah Moger! Uh, I yeah, like that's what Moger. I was like, oh, I like stopped paying attention to you when I saw Moger. Although I do really like Gnulf. I feel like we should have him up there somewhere. Think so? Uh, I, do you really think we need Ivan? I mean, I do kind of want to rank him up at least. He needs one that's kill. That's kind of what I'm looking at. Yeah, okay. All right. Let's keep him up there. So let's uh, put um, Krimer at the back here. And then Moger in front of Ivan. And we'll do this. And... That'll probably... We'll draw some aggro with him. Okay, cool. No. Boom. All right, cool. Ready for battle. Do oh, it. Where did all these other items come from? Oh, my God. Oh. What? Okay. Maybe we had more than we realized. Apparently, uh, plus two armor on rest, plus one armor per turn. 
And then plus three strength. I can... <laughs> wow. Well, you could give that to um, Moger. Okay, who's going to probably be resting? Ivan. Oops. Ivan, if anyone's going to be resting. I think so. Either that or Krumer. Either way. Oh, uh, but you know, he doesn't help. really need armor, though. If anything... Strength, armor... Yeah, I would uh, give I would give that to Moger because Moger is going to be our front man breaking armor. But he could be armor per turn because he's not going to be resting. So let's oh actually yeah, do okay, let's that's, do that. that's a good point. And then plus strength to Krumer because basically what happens is you hit with him until he's too weak, and then oh won't he's let not rank five, right? <laughs> I knew that. Okay, well whatever. <laughs> plus three strength for the spellcaster, I guess, and then plus two armor on rest. Uh, meh, sure. Yeah, all right. Why not? Okay, cool. I'm ready for battle. Do it. Do it. Mm-hmm. Mm. Look at the scene. All right, cool. So we already have some obstacles. Those don't look like they're destructible, though, or destroyable. Uh, not really. So right, I think we're going to have to move around that. Although I... <laughs> I'm glad that they have things like that. So say those aren't, we can't break those tree stumps. I'm actually glad that they integrated this because um, in Banner Saga 1, most maps were just fields, open fields. Mm -hmm. um, and the only times that we s didn't have the open field was generally when we were in like the tower and the floor was crumbled away. So we just, if we couldn't move over there because otherwise we would fall. Um, this is a good way to introduce those field mechanics, like those more interesting board layouts um, and like justifying it. Sorry, having difficulty figuring out where I want people to go. That's okay. I'm going to my scald here and then we'll do our defense men there. Yeah, sure, we'll do this. Also interesting to note. What's her enemies look oh, like? Oh, there she is. I thought, I can't look... It's not letting me, because oh. it wants me to press the ready button. Oh, it's yeah. probably... Yeah, the tutorial text is blocking. All right, so we're just going to have her... That's okay. This is probably going to be an easier fight. Here, and then Ow. I'm going to press ready, and then we can finally go. All right, yeah, cool. By the way, the horn, when you kill a person, you get a thing, and then you can you get willpower. press the horn, it's and you can willpower. get... It's free willpower. Oh, wait. What is going... Okay, there we go. All right, I can't move. I just have to... I can't, like, drag to this side of the screen. I don't remember if I could before. I like looking at the thing because there's always cool stuff that you may miss. Like, well, yeah, we used to I play mean, Where's Ubin. <laughs> that honestly was one of the things I think I found funniest from the Bastard Saga playthrough. Mm, no Ubin. I mean, Nick and I did that for a little while, too, or Harry Poppins and I, but you, like, took it to a whole new level <laughs> with your hashtag Ubin. Hashtag where's Ubin. Where's Ubin? All right. Oh, cool. So we got uh, Moger, who is our, who is always my favorite armor breaker, because he could get up to armor break like four. I think it was. It was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. Ivan has uh, three abilities, no two abilities. He has mend because he's a mender, and arc lightning, which allows him to attack, like shoot diagonals. It's pretty crazy. It's it's crazy though. It's still, in my opinion, really counterintuitive. I um, think it needs to be used right, it, it, like most abilities. Yeah, oh no, th there's definitely a right way to use it. I just like, my frustration with it is that even after I read how it's supposed to work, still struggled to use it correctly. Oh, get the debris cleared quickly. What? Okay, oh, maybe he was just screaming to them. Okay. Yeah, yeah I think we just, just need to, to fight them off. Yeah, no, we're fighting... I wonder if it's an infinite wave. Like, m more dredge are just going to keep coming until the debris is gone. I've just got to make sure I have enough. Nice. Um, what let's are we see. doing two do? Uh, it reduces up to five damage. Oh. Let's see, his armor right now is 13, so he probably doesn't need more than that. Yeah, I think you're I probably okay. could... Yeah, paid attention to. Well, ten, you, you can tell yeah, because nine. they're all like medium sized, and the one dude with the shield obviously has more defense than he is going to have mm -hmm. with power. So I think you made the right call. Oh, nice. okay. <laughs> well, I know this is an inopportune time to end the episode, but alas, it is that time. Yeah, you're terrible. <laughs> um, but we can continue this fight in the next episode. One, two, three, four. Yeah, as I get like all tactical and figure out how I actually want to do this. Yeah, this will give you a moment to like gather your your bearings. Um, I have the question. I feel okay. Or uh, I guess I really want to talk about 
that moment that we had before this, the, the that narrative moment that happened between the governor and Ludin mm. and Rook mm-hmm. and Ivan, that was intense, right? If you play the first it was, one... It was incredibly well written, too. That was the thing. The, the writing on it really got me, because before, it was usually like people were like, oh, I guess war, you're leading, or somebody would be like, why are you in charge? And you'd be like, shut up, that's why. And that was basically the writing at the time, because you yeah. were forced in that decision. But, but what's even more, I think one of the things that they did most successful in that interaction is that they understand the player's relationship with Ludin. Yes. And they used it completely. Yeah. Because nobody liked Ludin. <laughs> nobody liked Ludin. Unless you are like Ludin personally, I feel like you can't really I like guess that's fine. <laughs> I don't even know then. Because then even then you'd be like, no, he's pompous. You're pompous. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's why I don't like It's one of those ones where if you meet yourself, you probably would hate yourself, right? <laughs> <laughs> so in, in that, okay, so question of the day specifically for, I guess, Ludin is we, we've finally had a moment where like, yeah, Ludin. And then everybody was cheering for, or everybody was like, uh, like actually talking and like rooting for Rook and everything like that. So, question of the day, it should be something along the lines of, help me out, I just kind of ran out of steam here. <laughs> um, what did they do right in that in that situation? Like, yeah. what, what, like, I guess you guys can even go back and look at it and see like, what specific things did they do in the writing that really like, I don't know, I kind of touched on all the things they were talking yeah. about. What did they do that really like drove the relation, relationship, relationship between with, all the characters far that, that Yeah, you, yeah. I guess that might be a little complicated of a question, but yeah, I, what I did hope you think of that scene. Y- yeah. <laughs> I guess yeah. yeah, if you don't want to go that deep, just in general, like what did you like about that scene? What do you think they did right and wrong or even just right? You don't even have to talk about what they did wrong. Just, just talk about <laughs> it. Just comment. <laughs> we'll see you in the comment eh. section. Thank you for watching. Be sure to vote if you vote. want us to keep playing Banner Saga 2. Like. Subscribe. All that good stoofs. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.